Um, so next, uh, we'll just we'll just wrap up this chat about if it'll show up on the big screen. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just wrap up this chat talking about these different phases of the pandemic. You guys have been talking about them. One of the key aspects that's a bit unlike some of our other natural disasters or some of our other disasters where we have event and then the decay of the event, right? In the, in the case of pandemics, we tend to have these pulses, right? So it's a much more, um, at least for a period of time, at least, it's, it's these pulses of stuff. So here we go. This data is from this hospital in Houston, but it serves to make the point. This is, this is sort of a, a, a tight end just to sort of show this from the New York Times. This is also from the New York Times. But this shows the daily infection rate in the US. But this one, um, just want to focus on this. Um, so we have the, the first wave, boom, 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 right? So we're, we're early, early uh, 2020 here. And then that sort of dies down, okay? And we think we're okay. And then boom, we have the second wave, okay? Then we have the third wave, the so-called alpha variant. And, and then we have Delta, and then we have Omicron. And, th and this data only goes up to uh, December. So the Omicron is gonna actually blow, as you can see here, way higher. But this notion of these, these unfolding pulses, right? So what's happening is, one, we are getting some amount of resistance. So people are either dying or acquiring resistance through vaccination or exposure. And, the, and, and or we're changing our behavior. So, so we're not doing this, we're washing our hands more, we're wearing masks or whatever the case may be. And so in response, the virus is experiencing selection pressure, right? So the virus is changing how it's moving around with different, and, and, and the most common way that, that this particular virus, uh, COVID, uh, SARS-CoV-2 is, is doing that is through, chain, is through altered surface proteins. So, so outsmarting our immune system and trying to hide in different ways, shapes, or form, or um, being in a form that it can um, uh, volatile, it can get in the air more readily and spread more quickly. So those are the main things that, that tend to be driving these these bursts. Now there's there's evolution happen all the happening all the time, and there's constantly new waves popping in and popping out. But only some of them really work well, right? As as you know, most mutations end up not being advantageous. So these are just the ones that work well. Um, and as we talked about, these are the different waves. You guys have seen this, you're just playing with this, but basically we have, uh, you know, wave and then dip and then wave and then dip and then wave and then dip. Right now we're on, Omic we're on um, the sort of part two of the Omicron wave, right? Now, why did I have that twice? Uh, part two. This is what we look like as of this morning. So these are hot spots globally. So the darker, um, uh, the, the, the hotter the color, the hotter the orange, or then the darker purple brown color are areas that have the highest hotspots. And what I would just note here is that, um, uh, you know, very early on, one, because you can't underestimate the importance of all of us being stuck home and not able to go places and obsessed with whatever, watching the news, reading this mystery novel or whatever, right? And we just sort of were, were, we were in echo chambers in a very real sense, right? And so people are like, well, well, China fought it off, or well, well, blah, 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 fought it off, right? And, and what's happened, what we've seen in the, in the months and years since, everybody gets screwed, right? Everybody is getting hit. Some are getting hit more, some are getting hit less. But this notion that someone, quote unquote, escaped, New Zealand escaped, or that China knew how to deal with it, no, right? It's, it's, it's a difference in timing, right? And if we're not all in this together, and if we're not getting the whole planet to a healthy state, this is going to keep happening, right? This is going to keep happening, keep happening, keep happening. And so, for example, Australia, which had these very strong lockdowns, even as even as local citizens, you couldn't necessarily go from, uh, you know, New South Wales to wherever, right? So, so you couldn't even move within the country. New Zealand famously did a really good job of of getting folks locked down, um, but now they are, um, at least on a per capita basis, a lot of explosions going on um, where they are, we still have our problems, right? We still have a lot of stuff burning uh, across us and so on and so forth. So where we are right now is there's no such thing as a perfect refuge. Right now, China is dealing with a huge outbreak, right? 
and it's concentrated in the, the major um, uh, uh, economic hub of Shanghai, big industrial hub of Shanghai, where about 95% of the cases seem to be, and they have been on lockdown for, for weeks and weeks, like a really stringent lockdown. But there are also outbreaks in, 19, in Beijing and, and, and 19 other provinces. Um, and Hong Kong, so one of our colleagues, maybe one of you guys had a uh, chemistry class, one of our colleagues was just having a baby, his wife was just having a baby um, at, uh, a year ago, last summer, and he's from Hong Kong. And so he decided what he, they were going to do is they were going to, he and his wife are going to pack up, fly with their new baby on the airplane to, to um, Hong Kong and go through quarantine. They have a pretty stringent quarantine, two week quarantine in a hotel. And then they'd be with their family because their family hadn't seen their, their kid. And they were worried if they didn't go, their family wouldn't be able to see their, their child in you know, who knows how long. And it seemed like at the time, Hong Kong was pretty, really stringent and they had it under control, right? Once they were there, now, you know, with Omicron and everything, uh, Hong Kong was crazy, right? Hong Kong was crazy, insane uh, rates, more so than here. So, you know, hindsight's always 20. But other places, South Korea, Australia, that, you know, South Korea, a lot of it is doing great, and they're seeing more problems uh, recently. Uh, we're in this era now of these rising and falling waves. Um, thankfully, we, the vaccines have worked really well, at least our vaccines. The, the, the Chinese, the Sinovac and some of the Chinese vaccines are okay, but they're not as great as our vaccines, it appears. Um, but nevertheless, uh, most of our vaccines seem to be working very well. No vaccine is designed to not get you sick, right? They're designed to keep us from getting, from dying and getting debilitatingly ill and going to the hospital. Um, but uh, right now, uh, we're, so this, these, all these designations refer to the different surface pro, the different um, 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 families of surface proteins on the surface of the um, viral shell. Uh, and so, so uh, Omicron burned through us in uh, basically, for the most part, early January, mid-January. Um, uh, and now we're seeing sort of the, the Omicron part two. And so the so-called uh, uh, B2.121 is the one that seems to be coming up now. But, you know, this is going to be ongoing for some time now. The, 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 the success story so far with that is, yes, people are getting sick, but relatively few, comparatively speaking, hospitalizations and relatively few people in intensive care units and everything. So that seems to be working um, relatively well, both because of the vaccinations and because people have gotten sick. So we now know that after, um, after this Omicron wave, the majority of Americans have been infected with, with uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2. Not infected or vaccinated, infected. So the estimates are over 60% of the U.S. population has now been, was exposed to the virus. Maybe they didn't get sick. Maybe they, they had a, they had a, um, you know, non-presenting case, but still, but they were exposed. And for young kids, for kids younger than 12, it's over 70%. And in some places, 75% of young kids have been exposed to the virus. And so that plus our vaccinations is making these, these subsequent waves so far, at least, not quite as bad. Now, things can always turn around, but, but it's, we're looking, you know, fingers crossed, we're, we're hope, hopefully things are looking better. Um, uh, the problem is now, not just here, but in the UK and around the world, our testing capacity is going down. So Congress has yet to fund the next round of, of COVID help, right? To, to make testing uh, uh, free and easy and quick. And so what's happening mostly, and maybe you guys, so the last people, at, okay, when you guys last took your last COVID test, was it at school or was it at home? So who, who is school or someplace similar? And who is home? Okay so, so, okay, so last time you guys had a COVID test, so I wanna know if it was at school or an official place, or did you just do a home test? So who did, who's, whose last COVID test was at an official type of place? Okay, oh, wow, almost every, and who, who is at home? My last one was official. Um, okay, so that's great. You guys do the official one. So that's good. One, you don't need to deal with it. And two, they're, they're, they report that stuff. One of the issues is now the vast majority of people are now using the home test. They're not necessarily reporting that. They're not reporting their negatives. 
or they're positives necessarily. So we're, we're losing the ability to track. And the rapid tests are awesome. We should use those all the time. We should be using those all the time. But because we're using that, we're not doing PCR tests as much. And the PCR is the one that helps us with the surveillance to know, is it Omicron? Is it this? Is it that? So all this stuff, and again, this is just a phenomenon of being exhausted at this point in the, in the pandemic and, and money being exhausted and, and resources being exhausted. We're losing that, that important data um, info. Um, other so other uh, lessons, so the, the WHO just came out last week and estimated that uh, uh, 15 million people died up to the end of 2021, that doesn't count this year, due to COVID. So that's a huge number of folks, um, unfortunately, we've lost. And obviously many more millions of folks have been impacted by the loss of those family and friends and employees and everything. Uh, right. So, so. Right, so, so, so again, this, this number is probably real. So the number that M is talking about is, is the documented, that 100% confirmed, but as we talked about last week, and I'll show you again real quick, with the Institute for Health Medicine and other tools, we actually are more than a million folks dead in the US, but, but we're talking about like on the death certificate, did it say COVID uh, numbers? Um, Again, the virus still is primarily transmitted by these fine airborne droplets. Um, these mRNA viruses, or mRNA viruses, mRNA vaccines, I should say, that was a bad typo. Vaccines are the champs, right? They, these, this technology is gonna be transformative. And we'll see this over the coming years be applied to all manner of health things, not of vac vaccinations, of course, but other uh, personalized health medicines, uh, particularly cancers, but also we're hoping things like uh, multiple sclerosis and other those kind of long-term degenerative disease, possibly things like diabetes and things of that nature. Um, another big one, ignorance, uh, all this lack of being together, propaganda, all this stuff really screwed us. We actively intentionally hurt ourselves in, for, in ways that we need not have done. Um, uh, and um, our last control measure is just a week and a half ago were taken away when the judge ruled that we don't need to be masking on airplane, on, on public transportation. So um, the fact is most people didn't wear the right kind of masks and in the right way. So people are gonna take off their masks and eat peanuts for half an hour on the airplane. Is that really a mask mandate? Or if, uh, and people have done this where they've looked at, um, for example, news reports of people walking around where people have their masks on, but they're acting like chin diapers, right? They're below their nose. So that's not, again, that's not really working. So, so um, uh, it's important to say that strong mask mandates work, right? If we need them, but, but the sort of half-hearted ones don't really do much. Um, uh, and a lot of our stuff has been half-hearted. Um, it's still unclear how to best share information in this politicized environment, in this, in this environment where one political group wants to take advantage of another. And, and it's just uh, hugely problematic. Um, now what we're doing, now we're turning to all the backlog things, all the deferred things, the supply chain problems, folks that didn't have their colonoscopies or their eye checkups or their whatever because they were, because of the COVID stuff, all that stuff is now we're turning to those things and trying to start to make up for that. Um, uh, I'll say that uh, with regards to um, regulations, we this is yet another example. We've seen this with many, many disasters, but we need to be nimble, right? And that's a hard ask for a government that tends to want to be relatively slow, conservative, don't want to make quick decisions for understandable reasons. But for example, um, one classic problem that, that's becoming quite apparent is the FDA is the entity in our government that says, yes, this vaccine is safe. You can, you know, th this vaccine can be used in people. But how we use it in people is a different government agency. And that's a, that's a specialty group of an expert panel from the Center for Disease Control. Those are the ones that say, oh, we should have a booster. Or, or if you're over 50, you should have a booster. Or if you have immunocompromised, you should have a booster or something, you know, whatever the, whatever the situation is. Um, that's not how we've been rolling lately, right? It's 
how we've been rolling lately is the FDA approved the vaccines and then politicians from the White House are like, yep, we should, we're going to have the boosters out like next week, jumping the gun before the science, the, the objective medical scientific panel, the CDC makes a ruling, right? That's a problem, right? That's a problem. So, so we either believe the science and we follow the science or we don't believe in science, but, but, but that, that's a challenge. It's important to also say though, that some people are saying, you a-holes need to follow the science. I say that a lot of times, you a-holes need to follow the science. But the reality is our leaders, science is never ever gonna be policy, right? Science informs policy. But as this show, as our pandemic shows, just like a hurricane or an earthquake, we have to make calls. Someone has to make a judgment call, right? Hopefully strongly, heavily informed by science, but the fact remains, we don't have enough vaccines to give everyone. Science can't tell you how to do that. Science can't tell you to give it to the little baby or the old lady, right? That has to be a judgment call. And so sometimes we, we fall into the trap of saying, science should always, we always follow science. We should always follow science. And science should be a strong guide. But again, science is telling us what the facts are as best as we can understand them. They're always imperfect. We always need to make some amount of a judgment call. So there always is the role for the, the implementer of the policy. And, and, uh, and that, that, that needs to be said as well. Um, and then uh, another key thing that's, that's become apparent is this, the problem of centralizing the production of essential goods like masks or like PPE or these other things. That's a huge problem, right? In the, the uh, um, you know, the modern era of NAFTA and all this kind of stuff was, oh, we'll have this global supply chain and the world won't fight and won't have wars because we'll all be dependent on each other. Uh, that didn't seem to work, right? When China wanted to keep its masks, it sort of just kept its masks, right? When we wanted to keep our stuff or, or, or suck them away from poorer countries, we just kept them and suck, you know, kept them away from poorer countries and that kind of stuff. So that's, so that, that's a problem in a world where we're not cooperating. Right, our fractured world is problematic when we have these supply chains that that we depend on, on partners in other parts of the world. Um, and then I think it's also very obvious that disinformation kills. Um, it, it's just true. Uh, is that what I say? Yeah. So that's what I want to say. So, um, so I'll just I'll just say that uh, uh, we are. There's a lot of controversy right now, or a lot of kind of controversy. That's not right, but a lot of discussion about are we is this disease going from a pandemic to an to endemism where, where we just have this background level of sort of always constant you know amount of this stuff and yes that will eventually happen but there's too much attention paid to that right now right we have other things that we should be worried about and more people should be vaccinated right more we should be doing getting more of the world vaccinated but but um this will take care of itself and until we have the vast majority of the world vaccinated and or exposed, um, we're gonna keep potentially having outbreaks. And so the, the talk of, of endemism is, is a bit too early. Cool, questions. Do you guys have any questions for me about, about the pandemic? Make sense? Okay, let me then jump to just this last section here as soon as this. Thinks about it. Uh, why don't we? Why don't we do this? Why don't we do? Let's let's do this. Let's stop recording.